how can Westerners understand? Well, you turn to the language of social media, and that seems to be working just fine for ISIS. Um, ISIS is talking online about jars of Nutella, pictures of kittens, and emojis. These three images are in part helping ISIS recruiters lure Westerners into their fight because they want people to believe their life on the battlefield isn't so different than yours. They actually eat Nutella and I guess they have pet kittens. So let's talk about all of this. I'm joined by Mimi um, Gowry Nathan. I didn't want to butcher your last name and I hope I didn't. She's a visiting professor at City College New York and an expert on women and sexual violence. Thank you so much for being here. Sure. Um, there's actually a, an all-female ISIS brigade. Can you tell us about that? There is. Initially, ISIS didn't have women joining their ranks. And as with a lot of other movements, they realized the value of including women in the movement later on and did form an all-female brigade. And again, as with other movements, initially they played multiple roles and eventually some of them make it to the front lines. So there are ISIS female fighters actually, I guess, in combat? There are. There are female fighters on both sides of the line. There are Kurdish women fighting ISIS, and there are also female fighters as a part of ISIS. And that's actually appealing to recruits, right? Joining the fight is appealing to some recruits. In France, they actually found that 45% of the people calling the hotline to join ISIS were young women. Um, actually, the woman who's in charge of the all-female brigade publishes a sort of online magazine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she speaks a lot about what life is like um, as a woman in ISIS, as a fighter, on the ground. There's a number of blogs that discuss the position of women there. And um, I'm just going to read a bit about what she said in one of her magazine posts. She says, a woman's one true purpose is to serve a man, which is true even in liberal states and for today's free societies. According to the woman who wrote this article, a girl may be married between the ages of 9 and 17. Once she is a wife, she must remain at home, her face and body nearly always covered. So, it's very difficult for Westerners to understand. So you go and you fight what you consider the good fight, right? And then you're relegated to a life like that. Why would that appeal to young women anywhere? I think the thing to recognize is that women are not fighting for women's rights. The fight for ISIS is a fight for something else. It is the idea of a caliphate. It is a political fight that I think goes a bit deeper than social media and that is what women are attracted to for a number of reasons because they feel safer because they feel their identity as Sunnis is threatened because they feel that if they're trapped between Assad and ISIS they would rather be in ISIS even if they do have to wear a double veil but it's important to remember they are not fighting for women's rights they're fighting to be a part of a particular community that they feel safe in so the United States government is trying to figure out how to use social media to prevent women and others from joining ISIS. What could be effective? Well, I think oftentimes we put on social media things that are actually much broader social movements and political movements, and they express themselves in social media. But if you look at something like ISIS, there's been a conversation now that it is this group that has a 7th century ideology, but is using 21st century technology. And particularly if you look at women, they've actually been used in multiple ways in between those two centuries. And ISIS is drawing on a long history of female fighters being engaged in a political movement. And that's what we have to recognize. So what, what would be effective? I think recognizing when you have cases like Sajid al-Rashawi in Jordan, the failed suicide bomber, other female fighters, you know, who we look at just at the moment of extremism. You know, we look at that moment and then we look backwards at their life histories to find meaning as why they did that, why they would do that. As opposed to looking at all the young women out there now, the women who are disenfranchised, the women who are being raped, the women who are under repressive states, who are under militarization, and looking at them and saying, what are their lives like? What is making them need to join a movement like this? So, I mean, I know when, when, when I think of it like that, if you don't have much of a life and you have no power and you want to gain some sense of power and meaning in your life, then mm -hmm. perhaps it's understandable that you might want to join a political fight. Yeah, because it is something that makes you have a sense of belonging, right? And when your political rights are being taken away, you know, a lot of women will have to make the choice. You won't die from being a woman in some of these areas. You will have to wear a double veil, but you won't die. You can die from being a Sunni or other marginalized communities, let's say the Tamils in Sri Lanka. So they make that choice. When you fight for your life, you choose which fight to fight. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thank you for That's having me. That's great. I really appreciate it and helping us to understand.